To check out all our products, go to musicnomadcare.com. Intonation is the adjustment of the saddle that makes the fretted notes play in tune with the open string. Basically, any guitar, no matter how poorly it plays, if it's just intonated, you can use it for something. Intonation is a really important concept to understand, and it's a, a, an important part of the process as far as execution, because you really want your guitar to play well in tune. So the way that we'll do this is we'll get our, with the guitar in playing position, we'll get our open string perfectly tuned. And this is one of those times when it really is important that it is just right on the money. Um, a couple of tips. Uh, if you have a tuner that's having a hard time uh, holding on the note, you can turn your tone controls down and those will help the tuner to see the fundamental of the note and it will cut out some of the upper order harmonics and it just makes the tuner uh, more able to grab the note. So I'll go ahead and I turn my tones down. I'm gonna get right in tune. Okay, so that is just dead on the money, the strobe's not moving at all. So now that I'm perfectly in tune with my open string, I'm going to check my 12th fret octave, and then I like to go ahead and check the uh, 17th fret as well to make sure that I'm in tune all the way up the neck. So first thing I'll do is I'll check my 12th fret. It's a tiny bit flat, and then I'm gonna check my 17th, and it's a tiny bit sharp. So the 12th fret is a tiny bit flat, almost not enough to worry about. The 17th fret is a little bit sharp. On some guitars, you will have a situation with the fret placement where you can't get every note perfectly intonated. So Gibsons have a tendency to run a little sharp in the upper frets. Uh, some other guitar brands are you know, right on the money everywhere. It's just a, different guitars have different idiosyncrasies. So what I recommend is if you have a guitar that is uh, not coming into line on both the 12th and the 17th, you can optimize for different parts of the fretboard. Uh, oftentimes on Gibsons, what we'll do is we'll uh, intonate the E, A, and D just perfectly at the 12th fret because most players do not play beyond the 12th fret on those low strings. And then we'll start splitting the difference as we get over to the higher strings. But ultimately, after you intonate your instrument, you're going to want to listen around the neck, play chords and stuff wherever it is you play, and just listen for any out of tune notes. And you may have to tweak your intonation a little bit for your specific instrument. If you're using a high quality strobe tuner, a little bit of drift is not something that you would be able to hear. I mean, all things considered, if you can nail the intonation perfectly, that is what you should shoot for. But if you have a tiny bit of drift, there's no way you're gonna hear it. So don't stress too much if you can't get every note exact. That's your goal, but if it's just a little bit of a drift, you're not gonna hear it. So what we've got here is tiny, tiny bit of flat and just a tiny bit of sharp. So I'm gonna leave this. So I'm splitting the difference on the Gibson. On the A string, perfectly in tune, definitely a little bit flat. Okay, so I will move on to the D string. Let's get that perfectly in tune. It was a little flat there. And we'll check our 12th fret. That's dead on the money right there. Barely sharp at the 17th fret, but nothing that I would worry about. All right, so now we will go with our G. Get that perfectly in tune. And I did not adjust the G nut slot on this guitar. I don't know if you heard that, but there was a tiny ping whenever I tuned it. That's something you're always gonna to wanna to listen for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of tune it in that nut slot. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of tune it and apply it to the applicator. And I'll pull the G string out of the nut. Put a little bit of tune it in there. And then I can work that back and forth. Now it's nice and smooth. No pinging, no noise.
All right, so let's get that tuned back to pitch. So that's right on the money. Okay, we're sharp at the 12th fret and we're sharp at the 17th as well. So if your fretted notes are sharp in comparison to the open string, your scale length is too short and you're gonna need to move the saddle back to lengthen the scale. If your fretted notes are too flat, you're going to need to move the saddle forward to shorten the scale length uh, to compensate for that flatness. So on this bridge, the way the saddles are adjusted, they have a screw coming through the bridge base through the saddle, and I'm going to tighten the screw and it's gonna pull the saddle backwards. So that's going to lengthen my scale and it's going to flatten these fretted notes. So I'm gonna move the saddle backward by tightening the screw. Uh, if you were, if you had, if the bridge was flipped around, you would turn the screw the opposite direction, but you want this, the saddle to go backwards if the fretted note is sharp. So I'm gonna tighten the screw, and I'm gonna move the saddle back just a bit. Put it back in the playing position. You wanna make sure that we're back in tune exactly, and I am. Still a little bit sharp, still a little bit sharp at the 17th as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that saddle back just a bit more. and give it another shot. And anytime you move your saddle, you want to just make sure that your open string is back in tune because uh, it's going to go out of tune with that saddle moving. Okay, so there we are. That is perfectly in tune on the 12th. Still a little sharper on the 17th than I would like, so I'm going to give it one more, one more go. And on this uh, adjustment, you want to make sure that you actually see the saddle moving. This is not the type of adjustment where you just do a tiny little bit of a turn. You actually wanna see the saddle move a little bit um, and then you know you're actually changing the intonation. Once you get it really close, you may need to do those very minute, uh, minute adjustments, but in the beginning, you wanna make sure the saddle actually moves. Okay, there we are on the tuning. Perfect at the 12th fret and just barely sharp at the 17th. So that is that is a very well intonated. So now we'll move over to the B. Get that perfectly in tune. That is about as in tune as you can ever hope for. And then at the 17th fret, looks very good, just barely sharp. So kind of splitting the difference on those. And then lastly, we'll move over to our high E. Tiny bit sharp, a little bit sharp. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that saddle back a little bit. Um, so again, I'm gonna tighten, tighten this screw to pull the saddle back. Now retune. That's perfectly in tune at the 12th and just barely sharp at the 17th. So this guitar is very well intonated. Um, so just remember, if your fretted note is flat, you move the saddle forward towards the neck. If your fretted note is sharp, you move the saddle back away from the neck. As I'm checking my intonation on the upper frets, I'm noticing a condition that is somewhat common in strats. It's called stratitis. The pickups are too close to the strings and they are imparting a magnetic pull on the string that is causing the note to have a warbly sound. It is not ringing clearly and it affects the intonation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower these pickups down uh, until the string is outside of that uh, magnetic force and that will allow the string to ring clearly. Then we'll go ahead uh, and readjust them correctly after we're done with the setup process. So I'm gonna drop these pickups down until they're just about at the height of the uh, pick guard. Um, so now that I have my pickups lowered down, I will go ahead and move back into my intonation. So we've still got our 
tuning right on the money. And we may find that the intonation is different now. See, now the intonation is just about perfect. So that's a good example of the impact that magnets can have on the strings oscillation. If the pickups are too close to the strings, particularly on a strap, it will cause the string to oscillate in an uneven manner and it will cause the intonation to drift. So if you, um, you know, if you want, you just want to make sure that your pickups are low enough that they're not pulling on those strings. Okay, now we'll move on over to our A string. Okay, got that right in tune. Just looking real good there. It's looking great. It was a tiny bit flat on the 12th, tiny bit sharp on the 17th, but you know, that's, they're both so close. They're gonna be right on the money. We go on our D. D's a little sharp at the 12th, a little sharp at the 17th. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that D saddle back just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna loosen my string to uh, decrease the tension on that saddle. And then I'm gonna grab my, uh, my number one Phillips head and I'm going to tighten the saddle screw and pull that saddle back. So back to pitch, right on the money, perfect, perfect. So perfect 12th fret, 17th fret. I'm gonna move on to the G. When you're intonating, you want to be sure to press with the same type of pressure that you would use when you're normally playing. Since I'm usually setting up guitars that are not my own, I've developed sort of a feel for doing it that seems to work for my clients, but you'll just want to press the string down just like you are playing because that's going to be the uh, amount of pressure that you'll place on the string just during your normal play. So the G is looking really good. Move over to our B string. It's a little sharp up at the 17th. I'm going to go ahead and pull that back just a hair, just because they might be, uh, you know, have more of a tendency to play up high on the B string than they would on the E or the A. So I want to make sure that we get that nice and close. Perfect and perfect. So lastly, the high E. Okay. That is drifting ever so slightly flat. The high 17th is a little flat. I'm gonna back that screw out just a little bit. Sharpen that up just a bit. That looks really good. That looks really good. Couldn't, couldn't be in any more intonated than that. For detailed videos on how to use each gauge during the setup process, please visit musicnomadcare.com for all our how-to videos.